what's going on guys if you're clicking into this video it's probably because you saw the words team fortress and fortnite in the same sentence and your eyes wouldn't deceive you i decided to recreate two fort capture the flag from team fortress in fortnite in this video i'm going to go over the nine classes that you can select from what weapons and equipment that they come with the paths that you can choose to get into each other's base in case you're not familiar with the game Team Fortress or are too young to know what that is. Two quick notes, this is the first map that I've ever made for Fortnite and this is the second video I've ever made where I had to do a voiceover, so apologies for not having the standard YouTuber enthusiasm. And with that being said, let's take a look at the nine classes that you can choose from. You can see here that we have Scout, Soldier, Pyro, Demo Man, Heavy, Engineer, Sniper, Medic, and the Spy. We're going to start out with the Scout. The Scout comes equipped with an auto pistol and a double barrel shotgun. The starting health for the Scout is 150, which is the least out of any of the classes available. The Scout is a lightweight, fast, hit and run type of class. A good choice if you're going to try and capture the flag on your own. Next we're going to move on to the Soldier. The Soldier comes equipped with a pump shotgun and a quad launcher. In Team Fortress, the Soldier normally has four shots and a rocket launcher, so I thought the quad launcher was a great fit. The Soldier starts off with 225 health. A fun class, useful for area denial, and hitting enemies that are hiding behind cover. Next we're going to move on to the Pyro, which unfortunately is more of a joke class in this game due to the lack of flamethrowers and flame based weapons. He starts off with 200 health, a shotgun, and a blowtorch. The blowtorch does 8 damage per tick, hits relatively quick, but you have to get up close and personal. Moving on to the Demo Man. Demo Man spawns with 225 health, a proximity grenade launcher, and a snowball launcher. Originally, I was going to give him the traditional grenade launcher, but for balance purposes, it would have been too overpowered. The Demo Man is another one of those classes that's good at area denial and hitting enemies that are hiding behind cover. Next is the Heavy. The Heavy starts with 350 health, the most out of any class. The trade-off to that is he's extremely slow. He starts off with a shotgun and a sideways minigun which once again was for balance purposes because the normal minigun does too much damage. He can't make a lot of the jumps the other classes can make but he can still climb like anyone else. He might be slow but the minigun and his health make him a dangerous opponent. Next up is the engineer starting off with 175 health, a shotgun, and an auto pistol. He also comes equipped with a business turret. Unfortunately I couldn't find a way to make a working dispenser. Having infinite turrets led to many bugs, so you're limited to one. If the turret self-destructs from you being too far away, or it gets destroyed by an enemy, the only way to get another one is to switch classes, and then switch back to the engineer. The only other option is dying and respawning, which will give you another turret when you spawn. Next up is the sniper. The sniper starts with 175 health and is a support class. He has an SMG and a bolt action rifle. The sniper is good for hanging back and landing accurate shots with the sniper to try and keep the enemies at bay. Up next is the medic starting with 150 health. The same as the scout but if played correctly is nearly invincible and is probably the most powerful member of your team. He comes equipped with an SMG, a jellyfish that has a nice AOE healing effect, and med mist which is supposed to function kind of like the medic gun in team fortress while you have to briefly stand still with the jellyfish you can actually move with the med mist and it can be used to heal yourself or others and finally the last of the classes the spy the spy comes with 175 health a sword a revolver and cloak gauntlets unfortunately i can't find a way to make a working backstab mechanic and Epic has accidentally removed the melee manager that would allow me to customize the damage of the sword, so unfortunately the sword does 20 damage. It would really be nice if they would add that back into the game though. The cloak gauntlets are a nice tool for the spy. 
they allow you to go and stay almost completely invisible, which allows for nice sneak attacks. Next, we're going to move on to the flag mechanics. I have little markers scattered around the map that try and help guide players towards the red and blue flags. Unique and specific to your team HUD messages will appear whenever you pick up or drop a flag. If a flag has been dropped and sits on the ground for 10 seconds, it will end up returning back to where it came from, showing a message for it resetting. Capturing a flag will also display a message. And last but not least, if you try and enter one of your own spawn rooms with the flag, it will reset you and the flag. So don't do that. Now we're going to go over the routes you can take to get to the enemy's flag, in case you're not familiar with the map or the game. The main and most direct route is straight out of the spawn, over the bridge, past the enemy spawn, going down the long stairs, and into the enemy's flag room. The next route is going to be leaving your spawn, going across the bridge again, but this time we're going to stay on the first floor. Going through either of the two doorways that are at the front of each base, making your first right, which will bring you out to the rear courtyard, which is right underneath of the long stairs. Another route you can choose from, when you're in front of the enemy's main spawn, look to your left, there's two doorways. Take the one on the right marked by the flag, and it will take you down to the enemy's basement. From here, you can make a left at the end of the hall, or make your first left, both of which will bring you to the enemy flag. The last way you can get into an enemy's base is probably the least traveled, the sewers. Instead of going over the bridge and staying on the first or second story, drop down into the water. There's two tunnels, one per side. Coming into the tunnel, you'll be brought to a tiny room where you can continue into the base, or if you need to top off on your health, a small power up give you 50 health. Continuing down the sewer tunnels brings you to a set of stairs that will lead you to where the doors on the first story outside will bring you. At the opposite end, you'll find yourself in the courtyard underneath of the long stairs again. But if we quickly backtrack and go back towards the two doors that are on the first floor outside, you'll see there's a grate above you. And thanks to Fortnite's movement, you can come up through the grate, which will take you to the stairs that lead you into the enemy basement. The stairs that are in front of both teams' main spawn. You must capture five flags to win the round. There are five rounds in a game. After each round, a scoreboard will be displayed showing which players scored how many flags, how many eliminations they got, and how many assists they got. The last thing I'm going to show is the spawn slash resupply and class changing rooms that both sides have. The first room is obviously your main spawn. For the second room, when you leave the main spawn, you're going to go out towards the top of the bridge, go all the way across, and you'll find yourself in the second resupply room. There's two ways to leave this room, the way you came in and by dropping down through this into an L-shaped hallway that brings you to the courtyard or to the end of the sewers. The final room you'll find at the bottom of the long stairs when you leave your main spawn and make a right. At the bottom of the long stairs, just down the hall from their flag room, you'll find a door you can walk through. And this is the final room. The only other thing I can add is that you can earn XP while you're playing on this map. You get XP for picking up the flag, delivering the flag, eliminations, winning the round, and winning the game. If you like the map and you'd like to see more, I will be working on more. If you like the video, I'd appreciate if you like, comment, and subscribe. That way I can get myself to a thousand subscribers and then maybe get myself a creator code. If you have any ideas or suggestions for future maps or how to make my map better, leave a comment down below.